Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary folks, welcome to The Creative World. My name is Ryan, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a quick and dirty editing breakdown of the following image. All right, guys, so I wanna start off by saying that this is not intended to be an in-depth tutorial. This is more so a bit of insight to the creative process behind how I create the images that I make. More so, there are various techniques that I use throughout this video, but they are by no means the correct way or the proper way to do anything. They're just the methods that have been working for me over the years. So pick whatever tool or method that works best for you. That being said, let's get started. So I start off by bringing my image into Photoshop and then I use the crop tool to fix any kind of framing or compositional issues that I may have. Next, I'll move on to skin retouching. For this, I like to use frequency separation. Following that, I will then dodge and burn my subject using curves layers. The purpose of this is to create depth to the image as well as bringing attention to areas that I want the viewer to look at. After this, I will then proceed to cutting my subject out from the background. A lot of times I use the pen tool, but in this case, with a clean backdrop behind my subject, I use the select subject feature of Photoshop. And then I went into select the mask to refine the hair a bit. And then I simply used a round brush and painted on the layer mask to get a more solid selection of my subject. Following these steps, I'll then be exporting two versions of this image, a regular JPEG with the original background included, and then a PNG with transparency of just my subject by itself and the background turned off. You will see in a moment what these are for. I then turn to FSpy. This is a free program used to create virtual cameras in 3D space. It's pretty easy to use. You simply import your original image and pick two axes to line up with the arrows, and then the program will figure out your focal length and perspective. I then saved the FSpy project file to import into my 3D program of choice, which is another amazing and free program called Blender. By importing the FSpy file into Blender, my camera will already be set up for me. The only adjusting I usually have to do, if any, is adjust the height of the camera along the Z-axis. In addition to the camera being set up, it also automatically attaches the original image to the camera. This is where I'll go into the camera background settings and replace that image with the PNG cutout that I exported earlier. From here, I made a simple seamless backdrop by creating a plane, extruding it a few times, and beveling it. I then give it a nice texture using Quixel Megascans textures. Of course, if I was shooting with a seamless backdrop or shooting in a studio, this step could have been avoided altogether. From here on out, the process was very experimental, and this is where a lot of the creativity comes into play. To set dress my 3D virtual studio, I utilized assets again from Quixel Megascans. These assets require a paid subscription to use, but they make the process very streamlined and fun for me, so it's definitely worth the investment. There are also a lot of countless online resources of free 3D models and realistic textures that you can find all over the place. I tend to use Megascans a lot simply because the asset manager is pretty convenient to use, and the assets that themselves are very high quality. As I was shooting this, I felt my subject had some sort of a badass final boss type vibe, so I wanted to reflect that in my edit. The three main 3D models that I used in this was a wooden stool that I used to seat my subject, some Japanese gravestones, and a free 3D model of a katana that I found online. After I positioned the chair underneath my subject, I established the base lighting, which mimicked the original lighting that I had done on the shoot. By matching the lighting in 3D space with the original lighting of the image, you'll have a much more believable composite, as well as saving you a massive headache later on in Photoshop. During the set dressing process, I played around a lot with the positioning and scale of the various gravestones to help give a pleasing silhouette to my image. I think having a strong read to your image through paying attention to the silhouettes is one of the most overlooked yet most important aspects of building a good composite. To save myself a lot of trouble in painting in shadows in Photoshop, I created placeholder objects with the material that makes the objects themselves invisible while retaining the shadows that those objects cast. By placing these on surfaces that your subject would be touching, you'll get far more accurate and believable shadows than you would if you were to try drawing them in Photoshop, especially if you're not a digital painter. The final stylistic elements to my scene were the katanas. Again, focusing on the silhouette and the read of my image, I carefully placed the swords around my scene until I found a pleasing composition that framed my subject. Throughout all of these steps, I'm frequently adjusting the lighting in my scene to make it look as best as it can while still being motivated by the original lighting in the original photo. I then exported the 3D render of this image as well as a mist pass render, which is essentially showing the depth of the image with 
black being the foreground and white being in the background. I'll use this later in Photoshop to help create some fog or atmosphere. The editing process inside of Photoshop was definitely the quickest part of the process and actually fairly simple. I began by importing the 3D background image and placing it behind my subject. Right off the bat, the subject integrates almost perfectly with the background thanks to the 3D shadows that I put in the render. I did, however, go in with a soft round brush to darken some of the spots of the shadows to be a bit more convincing, as well as fixing any kind of fringing of the subject layer. To add some atmosphere, I brought in the mist pass that I made earlier and made two copies. I then tinted the first copy yellow using a hue and saturation adjustment. I then added a blank layer mask to that layer. Then I copied the contents of the second mispassed layer and pasted it into the layer mask of that first copy. I then deleted the second copy because I don't need it anymore. With that layer mask selected, I then played around with the levels to adjust the atmosphere to my liking. This is a pretty common way to get quick fog in your image without having to add fog in 3D. Next, I added in some embers from my Fire and Effects asset pack, which you can find down in the link below. I changed the color of the embers to blue, and then I used a layer mask to paint away some of the unwanted particles. After that, I made a new layer set to screen, and I painted in some light wrap around the edges of my subject using a large soft round brush set to a low opacity and sampling some of the colors from the background. Following that, I made another layer set to color dodge, and using the same brush, I painted over areas of my subject with blues and yellows to help give it some pop. After adding those atmospherics and effects, I then proceeded to the final steps, which are almost always the same in every image that I do. I began by merging all visible layers into a new layer on top, and then I added some sharpening. I then added a bit of chromatic aberration. This is a stylized choice just to make things look a little bit more cohesive. I again then merged all visible layers into a new layer and opened that layer up into Camera Raw where I did some various basic adjustments, played around with the curves, and added some film grain. Finally, I added a color lookup adjustment layer and selected a LUT to help give it a more stylized and cohesive look to the colors of my image. Here's the before. And this is the final edit. Everybody, thanks for watching. If you like this video, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't seen it already, go ahead and check out the lighting breakdown video somewhere right here. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. And until next time, stay creative.